Well, welcome to this tutorial which is going to look at how to simulate a rope bridge in Houdini. And I've got one set up here. And we're going to be using uh, the wire solvers uh, to do this. And uh, we're also going to use the rigid body solvers. And during the tutorial we'll take a look to at building constraint networks and then cutting or destroying constraint networks. So uh, let's get started. You may think the easiest way to simulate a rope bridge would be to take some geometry uh, such as we've got here, have a single piece of geometry, simply uh, set up the whole geometry as a wire object and then let it simulate. Now that approach gives you a reasonable uh, result but what tends to happen is that the the angle between these upward pieces and the ropes here doesn't simulate properly it, it it's too rigid whereas a real rope would have a lot of flexibility where those things join so instead uh, we're going to simulate this using a couple of different uh, wire objects and a constraint network and that'll also give us the opportunity to have a look at how to generate a constraint network uh, so let's crack on and first of all I'm going to show you how I made uh, the bridge so first of all I'm, I start off uh, right at the top of this network with the cross piece the, the thing that's bridging the main piece of rope that's bridging the gorge and I've got a, a lot of um, a lot of points here a hundred points and then I'm going to take every group every tenth point and these are going to be the points from which I'm going to hang my downward pieces. Now I could uh, use a copy shop to copy this single rope to make the four ropes that are the basic structure of the bridge. Uh, instead what I do here is just use a transform sop and then merge the results together and this is another you know pretty simple way to copy things in Houdini. You can just use a transform and then merge back in the original and that gives you two copies of the geometry and I do the same thing again so that we get four so that's our basic structure of the bridge uh, and then what I do is I blast away that uh, group of four wires just to get the single one back and the reason I'm doing that is I'm going to duplicate onto here a series of planks that are going to be the planks at the bottom so the planks are just a box uh, we can just about see it here it's just a basic simple box uh, I then create a group uh, of the polygons of that box called box polys and that the reason I do that is because later on uh, much later on in the tutorial we're going to want to delete uh, these these boxes when we get on to a later part of it and then I've just got a, uh, a null there to allow me to collect the box geometry if I want to. So we take that uh, horizontal piece here and we group every third point and I just call it group alternate points and then we copy the boxes to those points here and we can see that here so that's giving us our basic planks at the bottom and then I merge back in the four uh, wires that we have that we had earlier on Let me just get rid of that uh, template so this gives us our basic uh, horizontal shape uh, over here what we're doing is, is sorting out the vertical pieces so we've got a, a line that's going to be the vertical piece uh, I then group the two ends just have the two ends as part of a group and we'll come on into a minute uh, in a minute to, to say why that's necessary and then again we just copy these across to those points that I'd earlier uh, grouped group down points so we cover those across and then I duplicate them over to the other side like so now later on uh, when we come to build a constraint network which is going to combine or link these downward pieces to the horizontal pieces we saw earlier we're going to need to know some details about how these pieces relate and in particular we're going to know we're going to need to know for the endpoints of this geometry which points on this geometry here are nearest so we need to know where those points are connecting and Luckily, there's a very easy way to do that in Houdini, which is what's happening in the lowest part of this network. So the first thing I do is fuse together all the points here, make sure the boxes are fused in to the cross pieces. And then I create an attribute on this horizontal geometry, 
and what I call it is original PT num. And all this is set to is $PT, so it's the point number. So we're creating an attribute on each point which just reflects the point number. And if we have a look at the geometry spreadsheet, uh, and by the way, those of you who are familiar with Houdini 13, the geometry spreadsheet used to be called the details view. Have a look at this, and we can see that we've got point number zero, and the original point number is zero, and so on. So why bother to create this attribute? Well, the reason is that we're going to use uh, a very, very useful SOP in Houdini called the attribute transfer SOP. Uh, and this is what I'm doing here. And the attribute transfer SOP allows me to take this attribute that's on one set of geometry and transfer it to the group that's here and which is a group of the two ends of the downward pieces as you remember and what we can do is we can make sure it's only looking at the nearest point in each case so this is taking the ends of that downward piece having a look indeed let's just uh, template this so we can see it so it's taking each end of a piece here and it's looking for the nearest point on the other geometry and then it's taking this original PT num attribute and it's copying it across so if we have a look at this here we can see uh, that it has the original point number where it's minus one that's where the, we're not dealing with an end of, of a down piece so we can see that the nearest point number to the first end of the first uh, downward piece there is 343 three. the other end is 275 and so on and that's going to be very useful when we set up the constraint network okay let's jump up a level and we can see uh, if we have a look at the view here uh, that I've got the full bridge uh, on display and I've also got a, a big square object here just a box uh, that's going to be some collision geometry I, I've called it a cliff it's, it's just a box it's going to give something the bridge to collide against when we eventually uh, collapse it later on. So we've got the uh, bridge vertical and bridge horizontal pieces and the next thing we need to do is create a simulation. So let's start with the, the horizontal pieces here and what I'm going to do is simply click the wire object and it's going to create an auto dot network for me and inside we can see we've got our bridge, we've got a wire solver, and we've got gravity. And if I just play this, everything's just going to fall downwards. So I need to constrain this. I need to make sure that the ends of the bridge are fastened to something. And I can do that uh, in several ways, but the way I'm going to use is glue wire to animation. And what this is going to do is it's going to take particular points on this, on this wire geometry, and it's going to make sure they're always in the same position as the original SOP geometry, that that's the geometry we've imported. Now, of course, if that original SOP geometry, that original geometry was animated in some way, uh, this would all move around, uh, but in fact, our uh, geometry is static, so it's just gonna mean that these points get pinned in the same place throughout. So let's, uh, let's uh, click that. And now we need to collect, select some points, and I'm just gonna select this end point here, this one, this one, this one, round the other side, make sure this is still all selected, shift selecting each of these, like so, make sure we've got four points selected, we have, and then I can press enter. And what should this should mean, let's uh, just check that it's working, is and that's uh, not working, and the reason that's not working uh, is because our material here, the, the, the first node here, is the thing that's bringing in the bridge geometry, and it sets various properties for it. And the properties uh, are here. So the key ones are on the material tab here, and it's physical, and it gives it a weight and a width. Now, in fact, I've set up this bridge to a, be about, uh, if I remember right, three or four meters wide, so it's more or less on a realistic world scale. So if we're thinking about a rope in that case, it's not going to have a, uh, a width of half a meter. It's going to have a width of more like five centimeters. So I'm going to reduce that. And the second thing we need to do is this default values that are put in here are far too hard. So I'm going to give this a value of 2,200, maybe 100. And ten, and this is this is something you'll need to to play around with and test different values to make sure you get something that works. I, I think these values will work for me. 
So now, if we rewind and play again, we can see that uh, the bridge is bending in a, in a fairly realistic way. It's, a bit, it's probably a bit too bent. Um, we might want to sort that out in a minute. So that's managed to constrain these points. And in a minute, let's just have a look at what that means, that constraint. So what happened when we used this, this shove tool here? Well, if we look right at the bottom of this network, we've got these extra nodes here that weren't here before. And the key one here is uh, glue wire to anim animation. And this is referencing a, a constraint network, which we'll have a look at in a minute, and that's been created by the shelf tool. And it's saying, apply that constraint network to our geometry and use this constraint, which is a hard constraint relationship, which is called wire glue. It can be called anything, but in this case, the, the, the shelf tool calls it wire glue. And what that is doing is pinning those particular points on our wires to uh, the same place points on the original geometry. So let's have a look and see what this uh, this so-called uh, glue wire constraint geo is. And we can see it here. Let me dive inside uh, and I'll turn on the visibility of points so that we can see it. Um, and it's a bit difficult to see what this is at the start because it appears to be just an arbitrary set of points. Uh, but in fact, they're not uh, just points. What what we've got here are primitives. So if I middle click here, we can see we've got eight primitives. So each of these points is actually a primitive. And what you can't see is that there's a uh, there's a, a a line between each of these points, but it's of zero length, so the point just looks like a point. And the line is important because what a constraint network is doing is it's giving away for the solver to be given information about how particular points on the geometry relate to other objects in the simulation. In this case, we've, we've got the two objects in the simulation, uh, or, or rather we will have. In this case, what we've got is the, is the ends of the horizontal pieces of the, of the bridge, and we're pinning that to some world space geometry or some SOP, SOP geometry. And the way to see what's happening is to have a look at the geometry spreadsheet. It used to be called the details view. And we can see that we've got, uh, if we look at our primitives, uh, we've got a primitive naught, uh, which has two vertices, and those are point numbers zero and eight. So let's have a look at the data on point number zero. So that's uh, referring to our bridge horizontal, which is the piece of geometry we brought in. And it's got an anchor ID of zero, and then point eight has got an anchor ID of minus one, Okay, and it doesn't have a name. We can, we can forget the rest of, of this. So what uh, this is doing is telling the solver that point zero on this bridge horizontal geometry, the bridge horizontal dob object, that point needs to be constrained always to be, and this, this minus one means always to be at a particular point in space that's defined by the location of this point. So it's saying, make sure this point on the bridge horizontal geometry is always at this world space per per position defined by the earlier part of this. So what each of these is doing is pinning a single point on the bridge to a world space position. Uh, and indeed, uh, uh, we're going to use exactly that later on to make sure that our downward pieces connect properly to the rest of the bridge. So let's uh, now add those downward pieces. So that's fairly easy. We've got them here, bridge vertical pieces. So select that, so look at our scene view, and just select wire object. And this will, if we go into our auto.network, we can see we can see uh, that at the top here we've now got vertical pieces and horizontal pieces. And I just need to change the material on these and the width. So I'll give these an even smaller width, 0 0.03, so in other words, 3 centimeters. And the elasticity, elasticity I'll change again, like so. And uh, let's just play the simulation. 
uh, and we can see that all that happens is those those horizontal pieces just um, just uh, fall down. A couple of them are hitting bits of the bridge here and colliding, and that's uh, that's why we're getting this odd pattern here. Uh, but how are we going to connect these to uh, the rest of the bridge? Well, the answer is that we can simply use this uh, node here and use this wire glue constraint that we've already get us, got set up. And we can use it to constrain all of the geometry we need to constrain. We just need to set up an additional bit of constraint network. So let's do that. And I've got it set up over here already. So let's have a look at what I'm doing in this node. So I, first of all, I'm bringing in those downward pieces. And then I'm creating uh, some attributes that are going to be needed to, to build the constraint network. And you remember there was anchor ID. And on the, perhaps in fact, I didn't show you. Let me go back and do that. If we have a look at this wire constraint network here. Uh, we had a look at the point attributes. So we've got these anchor ID and name and so on, but I didn't show you the primitive attributes. So the primitive attributes are two, one of which is the name of the constraint that is going to be applied. And this is wire glue. Remember that was the name of the hard constraint node. Can be any name you like. Uh, and then a constraint type which, which determines how many directions are going to be affected by the constraint. And most of the time you're going to want to leave that as all. So let's go back to our building of the constraint network. So the first thing we do is we merge in those uh, pieces, those downward pieces, and then we add two attributes. We add a constraint name, which is wire glue, which is, we know the name of the constraint. We add a name attribute, uh, which is going to be on the points, that's important, that's got to be on the points, and we call it bridge vert because we know that's the name of the dop object that represents these downward uh, ropes. And then the constraint type, we saw that's on the primitive and that's set to all. So we're just setting up the same attributes that we had before. The final one we set up is anchor ID, and for the moment we set that to, to minus one by default, and we set it to the point number. So this is being set to the point numbers of each of these points. And the points we're affecting, uh, we're, we're doing it for all points, but then straight away, we blast away everything other than the group ends, which are the, each of these uh, has two ends, and those are the ones that we're just selecting here. And then to make that obvious, I use an add stop to delete the intervening geometry. So we now have just got the points. And those points have the data on them, uh, name and point number. Sorry, name and the original point number, which is, of course, uh, the data that we added right at the beginning when we were building the network. So what do we do next? Well, we take a line. And for display purposes, I'm just going to extend this a little bit to make it a very short line. We uh, take one end of it. Okay. And then we copy it to all of the points that we've just created here. So that's producing these short lines, you can see. And each of these is going to represent a constraint between the downward piece and the horizontal piece. By default, what I've done here is turn on, on the Attribute tab the copying across of all the template attributes. So now these lines all have the anchor ID, name, and so on attribute that we want. Okay. And then uh, we create on the primitives a constraint name attribute, wire glue, and a constraint type attribute of all. Now you will have spotted the sharp uh, eyed amongst you that uh, we're actually duplicating a step here that we needn't have done up here, but never mind. And then uh, what I do is just work on those single ends of the uh, of, of, of each of those lines and I convert the other end of that to have the name bridge horizontal and we give it the anchor ID which is the original point number attribute that we collected all those uh, steps ago right at the beginning 
So we've now got a piece of uh, each of these primitives uh, has two points. So let's have a look at the first one. So the first one has two points, 0 and 1. It's actually point number 0 and 1. So let's have a look at that. So it's connecting point number 343 three on the horizontal geometry to point number 0 on the vertical geometry. And it's creating a hard constraint between them. It's, it's also creating a hard constraint between 275 on the horizontal geometry and 9 on the vertical geometry and so on and so on through all of these. And then right at the end, just for neatness, I delete that point number attribute that we don't need. So this network is uh, effectively representing the constraints we need to keep those vertical pieces in, in place. So what I need to do next is to combine uh, the geometry, the constraint network that we generated here with the, uh, the constraint network that we generated here. And so I've just got a, a node here. All that's doing is uh, all that's doing is taking the two constraints and object merging them in to form a single network, which we can have a look at here, like so. And in fact, for neatness, I'm going to reduce the length of that line back down to zero, so that they're just points. So we've got our combined constraint in here. And if we turn on the display of points, we should be able to see there we are. Uh, and we, what we can't see is that actually these points on the end are subject to two constraints that, that's joining. I think it's two constraints. They're joining to the fixed position in world space, but they're also linking a downward piece. And then we've got a, an out null here. So if I go back into the auto dot network, and instead of pointing to just this first constraint network, I point to the combined constraint. What we should see, let me rewind it, is that we've got constraints, and we can see we've now got constraints on each of the points where the downward piece is connecting to the horizontal piece. And if I press play, we should see that bend fairly realistically like so. Well, the next step is to uh, have the bridge collapse. So what we're going to do for that is delete the constraints at the end here. And we can do that inside uh, the SOP that is providing the constraint network. So in fact, what I'm going to do is do it inside this combined constraint network. So let's take this. And let's delete this end. So I'm going to S for select, 4 for primitives, because of course each of these points is actually a primitive. And then just box select all of them. Now you won't see any highlighting because the primitive is of zero length. But if I hit delete, you can see that those points have disappeared. Uh, and what I'm going to do is now introduce a switch sob, like so, and connect it so that the first input goes through the delete blast and the second one doesn't. And so if I say here a condition that $FF, which is the frame number, is uh, less than 100, then up until frame 100 it's going to keep the existing constraint network. And then after frame 100 it's going to delete those last uh, set of points, which are the ones that connect uh, the geometry on the other side of the, on one side, and that should cause this to, f to fall down here. So uh, let's have a look and see whether that works. I go into the auto.network, and the reason it works, by the way, is that we've got this set to one overwrite with SOP. And so that's grabbing the constraint network at every frame. Now we could animate this so it just grabs it at the appropriate frames where the constraint network is changing, uh, but it doesn't seem to cause much performance cost to, to keep it uh, recalculating at every frame. So let's play this through. So whoop, I've obviously got uh, that constraint network the wrong way around. Let me just have a look. Command constraint. So 
Those should all be right. Ah, I've got the display flag on the blast, that's why, whereas it needs to be on the out. So that, that switch network has effect. So let's dive down in here, try again. So initially this is just going to sort of plunge downwards and spring back like that until we get to frame 100 where it's going to collapse like so. And it's just going to swing back and forth like that because I haven't got my cliff geometry in there. So let me correct that now. So go up to my uh, object level, select the cliffs node, go to the rigid body tab and collect static object. And that's going to bring that into the simulation as a static object that those wires are going to be able to collide with like so. And then at frame 100, that's going to start falling back and it's going to bash against there and so on. And we, we can see that's perhaps not quite as good as we might want. We might want to reduce, we might want to change around these, these parameters on the material tab to get a slightly more realistic result there. Well, this is all very well, but Ideally, we will want things like sort of individual uh, planks falling out of that uh, bridge uh, just before it falls. And then as it hits the, the wall, you want some of the other planks in the bottom to, to fall down and so on. And that's actually rather difficult using the wire solver. So we need a more, more sophisticated approach. So we need a second simulation. So I'm going to bring up another file and show you how to do that. So uh, the RBD network that we need to set up here, the rigid body network that we need to set up there, is going to simulate just the planks. And this is a bit more difficult than it ideally should be. Uh, and perhaps there's an easier method, which I'm, I'm not aware of. But um, what you need to do is you take your simulation. So this is what we're, what we're bringing in here, are the two simulated bits of our uh, geometry, uh, and then we cache them out to disk so that we, we've saved them out here. So if I play this, it, it should all be cached out to disk like so, and it all falls down. You can see I've adjusted the elasticity and so on of those, those ropes to give a slightly more realistic result. Uh, and we want, to, we want to deal with these planks here. Now, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's not that straightforward because what we need to do is use a, a packed geometry simulation um, in order to make this work. So what I do first of all is in fact I blast away uh, everything just to leave that, that single wire left. Uh, and then I take each uh, point in that geometry and give it a name, piece dollar $PT. And what the partition SOP is doing is it's creating a new group for each uh, each point where this rule changes. And because we've got point number in here, that the rule is going to change So for every point. And, and so each point is going to be in a different group. And then we can use a name SOP to make sure that uh, each uh, point has an appropriate name named from the group. So all I'm doing here is I'm setting up a name attribute on each of these points. Uh, which is unique, and we can see that here. We've got a lot of unnecessary data here, but somewhere around we've got name. There we go. And there are other ways you could do that. You could use an attribute create SOP to do that uh, just as quickly, if not more quickly. Uh, and then I'm bringing in uh, the box that we created earlier, and I'm copying it again to uh, the points. So why am I doing that? Well, the answer is that in order to make this a, a, a packed object, we need to use a copy SOP. And we need to use the copy SOP with um, this uh, set. I think it's on here. Pack geometry. So this is creating some packed geometry. If I right click on this, we can see 34 pack geometry. So that's each of those boxes is now a piece of pack geometry. I then create an attribute on it. 
which I'm calling full frame. And this is a point attribute too. Although it's a point attribute, each point is now representing a whole plank. So it's in effect, it's, a, it's an attribute on each plank. And I'm calling it full frame. And uh, this is going to be the frame on which uh, the plank should fall. And first of all, I'm taking the fifth and tenth point. So it's the fifth and tenth plank. And I'm, I'm saying that should fall on frame 50. Uh, and then I'm doing another one for uh, the 13th to the 25th. And so that's going to fall on frame 110. And a third one, I think we say for a couple more, that it falls on frame 160. So uh, what are we doing here? That uh, back to edit is missing. What we're doing here is we're doing a little attribute wrangle uh, and it's setting up two attributes on our packed primitives that are going to be understood by the RBD solver. And the two attributes are active and animated. If an RBD packed primitive is marked as active, if the point representing the primitive has an integer attribute active set to one, then that is going to be simulated by the solver. It's going to be affected by gravity, forces, collisions, and all the rest of it. Uh, if it's got the attribute animated set to one, uh, what the solver is going to do is not solve it using gravity and all the rest of it. It's just going to grab um, the position, the new position of that uh, item from the SOP geometry, from this geometry here, at every frame. Uh, and we'll see why that's important in a minute. But this says that if the frame number is greater than the full frame attribute, the full frame attribute is the one uh, we just created here. Right? So if it's greater than the full frame attribute, uh, then we set active to one and animated to zero. And what that's going to do is 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 change that so that the point that the, the objects that were just animated are going to start to be simulated and they will start to fall down under the effect of gravity and so on. And then uh, we are just going to use this in a auto.network. So in fact, uh, I've already got the auto.network set up, but let me delete that and actually let's, let's do it from scratch. So I will also delete from here this here and this. So let's take this and make this object a rigid body object. Like so. And we should now have uh, ah, now unfortunately what that has done is created it in the original auto.network, so I need to go down here. You won't be able to see this on the video, but I'm saying create new simulation, and that's going to give me a new auto.network, which I'm going to call auto.network planks. Uh, this this other auto.network here is the one that I was simulating the, the rope bridge in. So the auto.network planks is set to to be the current simulation. So now when I select this and do RPD object. Oh, that's not going to work. Let me just go down here, delete these two. Right, we're back to the beginning now. And of course, what I actually need to do is create an RBD fractured object. That's going to take account of the fact that we've got a packed primitive here. So let me do that, collect that RBD packed object, select that. And now we should see uh, that our br bridge planks are coming in here. And the thing we need to do is on this first node, which is the thing bringing in our geometry, our pack geometry, we need to select this override attribute. And we need to make sure that it's updating those two attributes active and animated at every frame. So what we should see now is this starts to fall down. Now, why is that happening? Well, it's not because uh, we're simulating uh, those planks in this network, because this network just has uh, gravity. They all ought to just fall down. Uh, but because we're setting, uh, and let's have a look at the geometry here, because we're setting this attribute here, animated and active, active is zero, animated is one. 
So the solver is treating each of these planks, each of these points representing a plank, as being animated and not simulated. So anyway, this carries on. And then if we get to frame 50, we can see, uh, whoops, we can say at frame 50 that those two planks that we selected earlier on, uh, their active values are going to have changed, here we go, have changed to 1. And that one has changed to 1 as well. So those are now being simulated and not being animated, which is why they're falling down. Okay. Uh, and actually this isn't going to work very well because I need to bring in my cliff uh, geometry here. So let's select my cliffs again, make that into an RBD static object, go back into here. And now as we play this, these, uh, these two fall down, uh, the bridge collapses, starts to fall down. We see a couple more of the, of the planks are falling out. And then right at the end, after it's hit the cliff, a couple more fall out and it, and it simulates out. So the final step is to reassemble the bridge, which we can do in here. So this is the result of the, of the DOP uh, simulation, right? Like so, as you can see. Uh, and what we really want to do is we want to merge in the ropes back again. So when up here we deleted uh, the we deleted the points on here, the the, the planks. Uh, what we're doing here is we're taking that and we're deleting everything but the planks, right? We're then polywiring it, so that gives it a bit of thickness, as you can see. Just turn that off. Um, uh, that uh, is very thin at the moment, but we could increase it to show you. So, and then we merge uh, those ropes in with the DOP simulation, like so. And there's an error there because it's got slightly different, uh, slightly different attributes. But we don't need to worry about that. And now what we should see is our bridge collapses like this. A couple of things fall out, and it goes down, and then some more fall out like so. So that's a quick overview of how to create uh, a rope bridge using wire simulation and also how to use constraint networks. I hope it's been useful.